I learned that every YouTube video needs to start with an engaging question called the hook. So this is this video's starting question. Is an Edge HD worth it compared to a standard 8 inch SCT? If that is not engaging enough, would you want to see me making a fool of myself? Then stick around and watch the story unfold. My name is Martin Schumacher and I call myself Koplamp on this channel. If you are here for the first time, welcome. If you are a returning visitor, welcome back and thanks for your support. At the end of this video, I will present some comparison images made with the same camera, guide scope and mount. Only the telescope will be different. So stick around and perhaps I will add even some bloopers at the end. There's a very contagious disease doing the rounds amongst astronomers. It's a type of fever and no, I'm not referring to COVID. This is called aperture fever. The urge to buy bigger telescopes as soon as the budget allows it. My biggest telescope is the 8 inch SCT of Celestron. And I recently replaced it by purchasing an HHD 8 inch telescope. You might think, what is wrong with me? Perhaps the Pfizer shots cured me of aperture fever as well. But I don't think so. There's more than meets the eye with the HHD. And that is what this video is all about. So for this comparison, we need to have a shootout between the two telescopes. So perhaps it's best to enlist some help. Well, at the AAA, the Aperture Addicts Anonymous, I got in touch with a fellow sufferer of this condition and he kindly offered me his help. On the right side, we will have me, Koplamp, with the trusty old C8. And on the other side, on the left, we will have all the way from Australia, Byron Bay Observatory, Mr. Dylan O'Donnell. Good day, Dylan O'Donnell here. It's my pleasure to come to the hemisphere of less impressive targets. To make it a fair comparison, we will only swap the telescope and we will be using the same guide scope, the same ASI Air Pro to control everything, the same ASI 294 MC Pro camera and the same Ioptron CEM40 mount. Optically, we will have the choice to shoot with a reducer or in the native focal length. These reducers are going to make the biggest difference between the two telescopes. So perhaps Dylan, then you can showcase the differences between the two reducers. Sure thing. The C8 has a reducer that not only reduces, but also flattens the image. The reducing power is dot 63 times. And yeah, this unit just screws at the end of the telescope and you get also a flat image with the classical C8. The HHD is natively flat though. So this is only a reducer, dot seven times. And this is really a sexy thing. This is serious stuff compared to the amateur looking. Even the box it comes in is more sexy with the HHD. Thank you, Dylan. Um, yeah, all that sexiness comes with a bigger price and a bigger weight. So there are downsides. Let's zoom in at both telescopes and take a closer look at the similarities 
and their differences. First of all, the old C8 has a standard SCT setup, a tube with on the front side a corrector plate and the eyepiece at the back side. Eyepieces? Eyepieces are meaningless. Yeah, according to you, everything is meaningless. The main mirror has a hole in it and it can be moved up and down to achieve focus. To get the light to go through the hole in the main mirror, it needs to be bounced back. For this, a secondary mirror is used, which is mounted in the middle of the corrector plate. To get the best possible image, the alignment of this secondary mirror needs to be perfect. And aligning this is known as collimation. On the old C8, the collimation can be adjusted using three screws, which are hidden underneath the orange cap. By adjusting the three screws, the angle of the secondary mirror can be slightly adjusted. There are many methods to do this, so I suggest doing some research and finding out what your favorite method is. Mine is using the tri platinov mask, or as I call it, the Collimatinov mask. It's like this, and it shows two things at the same time. Are you in focus? And is the collimation correct? The diffraction pattern clearly shows whether or not the telescope is in perfect focus. And because it's a tri batinov mask, it will immediately also show a discrepancy if the collimation is not correct. I will one day produce a video where I go into detail on this specific subject. That is all to be told about the classic C8. So perhaps it's now time for Dylan to show the Edge HD. Uh, Dylan? Yo, Dylan. here what are you doing there having a barbie nah that would be too stereotypical i found some st4 cables in your observatory so i thought let's get rid of them what this is not my observatory this is the cosmos observatory where i am just a volunteer come on back up you need to explain the edge hd The Edge HD has the exact similar optical design as the classical C8, but with the addition of a correctional lens within the baffle that is uh, going through the hole in the big mirror. It is this lens that flattens the image of the image circle. The OTA has a few other features that are absent on the other C8. There are these ports that allow the air in the tube to exit, which helps get the scope acclimated to the ambient temperature. An absolute necessity, as in the classical C8, ventilation is done through the baffle tube. The Edge HD has this exit blocked by means of the corrective lens. The vents are equipped with a micro mesh filter to prevent dust from getting in. Another feature are these screws at the rear cell. These allow the mirror movement to be restricted once you've reached perfect focus. So even when the telescope is tracking an object throughout the night, the mirror is not moving. Be careful though not to adjust the focus with these support rods in position. Finally, a big difference between this Edge HD and the classical C8 is that this one supports FASTAR. So you can remove the secondary mirror and replace it with a hyperstar. Then this scope essentially will turn into an F2 monster, comparable to the Raza. The hyperstar is not cheap though, but if it is in your budget, then you essentially have three scopes in one. You have the native focal length of 232 millimeters at F10, you get the reduced focal length of about 1400 millimeters uh, at f7 and with the hyperstar you get about 430 millimeters i believe with f2 and all with eight entire inches thanks for watching this video i hope you found it entertaining and informative. I highly suggest you to like and subscribe to Koplam's YouTube channel to help him cope with living under this boring hemisphere.
And thank you, Dylan, for allowing me to make a fool of myself impersonating you. Yeah, a bit of a poor man's YouTube collaboration. But that doesn't matter. Because everything is meaningless and we're all going Long to... Long for clear and dark skies. Fair enough. Starting question. Is an. I'm looking at it. Needs to start with an engaging question. Called the. Come uh, on, auto. While at the AAA. I highly suggest you to like and subscribe. Fucking car.